Thank you very much for being here. I know there's an awful lot going on today, and um, it's fantastic that we have, I think, probably 100 universities represented in the room. Um, and what our intention with this event was to make it a really useful uh, working symposium, if you like, for the people who deal with university performance data day in, day out. And I think we've achieved that, so it's really good to see you all here. Um, in some ways, I think the issues that we're all voting on today in the referendum aren't entirely divorced from the issues we're discussing in the first session today, because, as all of you will know, higher education has become a truly global uh, concern in the last five to ten years in particular. And I think it's true to say that that's, that's the case in the UK probably more than any other country in the world. And um, it, it manifests itself in all sorts of ways. Academics obviously travel the world as they build careers. Students are increasingly traveling the world. Something like four and a half million students travel internationally to, to study now. Um, institutions are building partnerships um, across continents. And of course, research is both funded and carried out by groups who have no interest in national borders. So the landscape that, that exists now is quite different from that which existed when we first set up our rankings 10 years ago. And what we hope to do is to be able to try and help you navigate that landscape and, and find out you know, how you're comparing with peers around the world. And I think as a team at Times Higher Education, we spend a lot of time on, on planes. All of us on stage uh, have just flown back from Hong Kong where we held our Asia University Summit. There were about 250 uh, people there, including, uh, I think, 30 university presidents from across the world discussing performance issues. And we're sometimes aware that we actually spend more time probably talking to university leaders around the world uh, about you know, how they're performing, how they're doing internationally, where the challenges are coming from, than we do with all of you here in the UK where we're based. So there's a huge amount of information and insight um, in our, at our fingertips through the world rankings that can be gleaned and we want to share some of that with you today. Um, to help us do that, we have Phil Beatty, the editor of the World University Rankings, here to my left, and next to him, Duncan Ross, THE's Data and Analytics Director. And they'll be taking you through a detailed analysis of the UK's position uh, relative to both old rivals like the US and new challenges such as China, who, as we all know, are forging ahead with levels of investment that, that we could probably only dream of. But we're also here today to consider a new national data set on one of the most pressing and, uh, and interesting issues facing uh, UK higher education, and that's the Teaching Excellence Framework. I hope many of you will have read our cover story on this today, and you'll see it's been in all the, the broadsheets as well. Indeed, David Willits, who's joining us later, is, is, I think, as I speak, talking on The World at One on the BBC about this data set. But we want to give you uh, some insight behind the headlines to really sort of unpick what we've done and, and what we can learn from it. And for that, uh, we're going to have a second session after a coffee break when um, we will have a keynote from David Willits, who's now chair of THE's advisory board. Um, and we'll also have a full analysis from Nikki Horseman, who's THE's lead data analyst, who'll get into the, the gory detail, if you like, of what the, the mock TEF has found. A um, couple of housekeeping points before we get started. There is Wi-Fi. I think some of you have been asking about this. Um, the network's JW Marriott conference. The login is THE 2016, so feel free to use that. Um, another point I'd like to make at the outset is that uh, both the ranking session and the TEF session will be filmed, so we will be ho hosting film of the event uh, on our website later. Um, and we will have opportunities for question and answer after both sessions. So I really would be grateful if you could get involved in those comments, questions, um, particularly with the, the TEF analysis later. We will be using our discussion with you there as a, a sort of kickoff for a consultation on what the future of teaching metrics might, might be and what we might consider using in a future THE teaching ranking which will inevitably go on to become very influential. So it's really important that you t talk to us as well in, in, in those sessions. Um, a final point, this, uh, those sessions will be under Chatham House rules, so you can be rest assured that any questions or comments you have um, won't be reported, attributed to you in THE. So there's lots to get through, um, and we hope today's symposium will give you some valuable insights into the performance data that we now hold at THE um, and ways that we can use it to help you understand how your institutions are doing and, and how they're navigating this undoubtedly very challenging landscape around the world. But for now, I'd like to hand over to Phil Beatty, who will give you some opening context on the world rankings. 
Um, and before I do that, I'll, I'd just like to play a short video montage, which I think emphasizes the point I made earlier about the level of, of influence that these rankings now have right around the world. The THU rankings are closely watched across the world and are used by governments and university leaders to help shape strategy and by academics to inform career decisions. But most importantly, they are used by talented and ambitious students and their families to help them make one of the most important decisions of their lives, who to trust with their university education. Seoul National University took 44, that's right, by one of the most widely observed and highly sought international university rankings conducted by the British magazine Times Higher Education. The Times Higher Education magazine published its annual World University Rankings on Wednesday. Top institutions in China, South Korea, Singapore and Japan have all made gains in the latest Times Higher Education World University Rankings. In its World University Rankings list released Monday, the British magazine Times Higher Education placed Seoul National University in 44th place. Uh, this is coming from the Times Higher Education World University Rankings for 2012 to 2013. And we, the United States, have the number one university in the world. India has improved its performance in the Times World University Rankings with three new entrants to the world top 400 list. Hali mein jari Times Higher Education Ranking ke mutabik dunia ki top 200 universities mein Bharat ki koi bhi university shamil nahi hai. So why do these rankings matter? Well, increasingly they influence the choices that both students and academics make. Researchers use them to look for new global collaborations. Often they're also built into universities' strategic plans. And beyond the academic walls, the rankings play a vital role at government level across the world, with universities helping to drive economic growth through knowledge, innovation and skills.